One of the things I love about this shul is hearing all the different daveners and it's so thrilling to be back in this chapel and to really hear. It's beautiful. Now, if you think that because I'm up here, I'm going to talk about me dote, you're right. So I'm going to have us sing this song, which is written by a Jewish composer named Ali Helpert. And it's powerful. I believe it's very powerful. And it goes like this. And if you were with me last night, you know it. Loosen, loosen, baby. You don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. Loosen, loosen, baby. You don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. Try it with me. Loosen, loosen, baby. You don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. Loosen, loosen, baby. You don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. One more time. Loosen, loosen, baby. You don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. Holy breath and holy name. Will you ease, will you ease this pain? Holy breath and holy name. Will you ease, will you ease this pain? Loosen, loosen, baby. You don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. You don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. You don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Wow. How many of you feel the weight of the world? Yeah. Do you feel it in your body? Before I heard this song, I knew I carried stress in my head, my neck, my shoulders, the typical places. But I never thought about how deep tension, stress, worry, and pain could go. I have listened to this song over and over and over again. And every time I do, I feel as if someone is seeing the enormity of it all and giving me permission to release, to let go for a minute of that weight. And I breathe deep and I sigh it out every time. And I actually feel my heart release and crack open just a bit. We are living in difficult times. So much heaviness. Week after week, another tragedy. The Gun Violence Archive puts the count of mass shootings at 230 and 256 dead and 996 injured in just the first five months of 200, 2022. Three shootings just this past week. Our laws are turning back in time. Our country is so divided, nothing is getting done. Prices of gas and groceries and travel are all off the charts and shelves are sparse. There is hate all around. And today, amidst it all, we stand here at Sinai trying to receive the laws and the rules that are to shape our people. My friend and teacher, Rabbi Mark Margolius, wrote the following at the beginning of the seventh week in his daily Omer Reflections for the Institute for Jewish Spirituality. This week's teaching refers to a radical Hasidic tradition 
that at Mount Sinai, the recently freed Israelites actually heard only the first letter of the first word, the silent letter Aleph. Rabbi Arthur Green teaches that God speaks only the great silence. The divine is a silent womb that contains all language within it. Revelation at Sinai consists of hearing only divine silence, the sound of the Aleph. The prophet Elijah has a similar experience at Sinai. He hears God, not in noise, but in cold mamadaka, a still, small voice, the sound of silence. So I ask, is it even possible for us to hear a still small voice of divinity when there is so much noise in our heads, so much weight being held in our muscles and bones, so much grief in our hearts? We worry about our children growing up and our parents as they age. We worry about our own mortality and illnesses affecting those we love. And what about our responsibilities to ourselves, our bodies, and the environment, our finances? Will we have enough to send our children to college, to buy a house, to retire? With all these pressures, who could possibly hear anything, let alone a still small voice? I'm not trying to be a downer, but the theme of this year's Shavuot has been war and peace. We know there is war all around us and it's internal as well. Yet if we let it take us over, we won't ever be able to really hear. We'll risk being like Pharaoh with a hardened heart. We will close ourselves off from any divine message. We will be kept at a distance from God. We will be separated from the Torah we just received. We are not alone in this dilemma. While the Israelites are still in Egypt, God tells Moshe, say to the Israelites, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. And then you know that I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out from the yoke of the Egyptians. And I will bring you to the land I have sworn with uplifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. And then we read, But when Moses told the Israelites, they did not listen. Their spirits were crushed by cruel bondage. The Israelites couldn't hear because of the enormity of living a life in slavery. They literally and figuratively, figuratively were in pain down to their muscles and bones. And later in the book of Bamidbar, we read, Moses heard the people of every family wailing at the entrance to, his to their tents. The Lord became exceedingly angry and Moses was troubled. He asked the Lord, why have you brought this trouble on your servant? What have I done to displease you that you put the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth? Why do you try? Tell me to carry them in my arms as a nurse carries an infant to the land you promised an oath to your ancestors. Where can I get meat for all of these people? They keep wailing to me, give us meat to eat. I cannot carry all these people by myself. The burden is too heavy for me. If this is how you're going to treat me, please go ahead and kill me. If I have found favor in your eyes and do not let me face my own ruin. Too much to bear. Too much to bear. Even for Moshe, the one who is considered the greatest Savlan, the most patient man who holds all of our burdens, even for him, it was too much to bear. So what do we do? How do we make space so we can listen to our hearts? Hear the Torah that can guide us in times of difficulty. Learn the lessons. No, I'm not going to ask you to meditate, though the ancient Hasidic masters believed this was the only way. But if we listen deeper, maybe Adonai has already told us. 
לכן אמור לבני ישראל אני אדוני והוצאתי אתכם מתחת סבלות מצרים והצלתי אתכם מעבודתם וגאלתי אתכם בזרוע נטויה ובשפטים גדולים. Say therefore to the Israelite people, I am Adonai, I will free you from the burden of Egyptians and deliver you from bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and through extraordinary chastisements. God is saying, I am here. And then again, just a few chapters later in our Torah portion today, God reminds us, Atemer item asher asiti lemitzrayim, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians, how I bore you on eagles' winds, wings and brought you to me. God is saying, I am here. We need to hear that still small voice of the divine. And in order to do that amidst all the chaos and noise, we must put our trust in the mystery, the universe, in God. This is the quality, the midah of bitachon, the quality that allows us to lean back and feel held by something bigger than ourselves, the quality that helps us listen more intentionally to the words we read, we pray before the Shema when we say, Ahava Rabba, your great love, and we feel the unconditional love that Adonai has for us. The quality that gives us the courage to be in partnership when things are hard. Oh, Ziv, Zimra, Yava, Yehili, Lishua, you put in your strength, Israel. Then lean back and I, Adonai, will hold you. The quality that opens our hearts to understand the depth of the final words of the Adon Olam. Adonai Li, Velo Ira, God is with me, I shall not fear. We turn to these words when we're struggling. We put them in our toolbox and we take them out, not just in synagogue, but when we are struggling anywhere. We were given these words from the Psalms to help strengthen our bitachon. Psalm 56, my enemies pursue me all day long for many proudly assail me. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, God, in God whose word I praise and God I trust, I will not be afraid. Psalm 13, but I trust in your faithfulness. My heart will exalt in your deliverance. Psalm 23, one of the ones we know best. Though I walk through the valley of deepest darkness, I fear no harm, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. More verses to put in our toolbox to pull out when we are having strife in our heart, when we feel troubled. And we were reminded just this morning, yet again, to put our trust in the divine. When we read these words, God's words, right before the Ten Commandments. I, Adonai, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, the house of bondage. This is not to say God will literally take our burdens away. Perhaps if we trust enough to loosen our grip, we will sense we will hear and breathe a bit more easy and have more clarity and ease our hearts, even if only for a moment. So we ask Adonai, help us to hear these words, help us to have faith and trust that you will ease our hearts and free us from the burdens we carry today. Lift us out of the pain and darkness so we may hear your voice. Loosen, loosen, baby, you don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. Loosen, loosen, baby, 
You don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. Loosen, loosen, baby. You don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. Holy breath and holy name. Won't you ease, won't you ease this pain? Holy breath and holy name. Will you ease, will you ease this pain? And then we can hear Shima. Israel, sing with me. Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Echad. Chag Sameach. Thank <laughs> you.